Dr. Rosado, thank you for joining us today uh, to talk with us a little bit about your experiences here uh, when you were here at the University of Southern Mississippi and how you made the transition into uh, your career. So I want to I want to thank you for for joining us. Uh, and I think you need to make probably a, a legal statement first, and then we'll and then we'll get started. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's a it's a pleasure to talk to the students. Uh, I am Dr. Del Rosado. I work for CF Industries. Just want to make clear that, that any comments uh, made here, any interview questions, are my personal opinions and do not reflect the stance of the company. All right. Well, thank you very much. Again, just to give a little bit of overview, Chemistry 108 is all chemistry majors, and and so we're we're doing a series on some former Golden Eagles, uh, and uh, Dr. Rosado. Uh, was a Golden Eagle a few years ago. So do you want to tell us the, the time frame that you were here at the University of Southern Mississippi? Yeah, so um, I actually started college in 2000 at Jones, junior college, and I think it's just Jones College now. Uh, and then I transferred to USM in, I think it was uh, the beginning of 2003. I was there until 2005 uh, getting my undergrad, and then I actually started uh, the doctoral program under Dr. Masterson is my advisor, uh, and I was there until 2009. So after that, I uh, did a postdoc at Vanderbilt and uh, started working. Fantastic. So uh, could you tell the students just uh, briefly, uh, why did you pick chemistry and biochemistry as your major? What, what drew you to, to the chemistry side of things? So this is the interesting part. I was actually an accounting major when I started college. Uh, I had a really great science teacher at uh, at Jones, uh, Joan Messer. Uh, she was a biochemist uh, that got her degree from Southern Miss. So uh, she really got me back into sciences. I was much heavily into it when I was younger and got on the business side. So um, what I really got interested in was really the inner work in the body. So my bachelor's degree is in biochemistry. And so I wanted to know, you know, the chemistry behind life, basically. So uh, that's what led me down that career path or that down that that major track. OK, well, you mentioned that you started off at Jones College or what was JCJC at the time. Uh, could you tell the students a little bit about your transition from um, a, a junior community college into the senior college. So you kind of experienced that that um, twice, right? From high school to Jones and then from Jones to, to Southern Miss. Do you, you want to uh, kind of tell the students about that experience transitioning into Southern Miss and, and any advice that you might have in terms of those students who are making the transition now? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I am from the, the local area. I'm from uh, Summerall, Mississippi. And I had a band scholarship at Jones, so I started Jones there uh, and, and went there for two years and I took care of most of my base work. Uh, at the transfer into USM was pretty easy going. I had a lot of friends that went to Jones that also transferred with me to Southern Miss. And so that kind of helped out with my, my friend circle and that, that social support that you need. But it was, uh, it was a, a little bit more difficult transferring into the chemistry program because I had so few friends who were chemistry majors. And so that was one of the, the harder points of it was transferring in. You need a study group um, and, uh, you know, you need kind of that that support system your, of your peers. Well, uh, luckily, you know, I found uh, a lot of good friends immediately at Southern Miss. We immediately was able to get into the groups. I was I think I started out in organic too, uh, was was one of my most, my most memorable classes there and uh, analytical chemistry and I met some of my best friends there and I'm still good friends with those, uh, those people. Um, so I'd say you know that was that was probably the more difficult component as far as the uh, the personal transition. Academically there are some courses that uh, that that you're told to line up sometimes and they don't line up as well. So uh, for example when I was at Jones they had five hour calculus one and two. Uh, so I took Cal one there uh, well, USM was three, three, and three. So, uh, you know, even though I had most of Cal 2 already in that five hour, I ended up taking an additional course. Uh, there was, you know, and I, I would tell transfer students to look out for this, the non-major requirements, like the humanities requirements, you need so many of the hours there. Just do a double check. Uh, unlike me, 
and <laughs> not have to take an extra uh, course that you're on your uh, senior year. All right, fantastic. So can you tell us a little bit about when you uh, started getting involved in your undergraduate research and, and how how that kind of helped shape um, shape you overall uh, as, as you transitioned into graduate school? Yeah, absolutely. And and I would encourage the students, especially after the sophomore year, to get in, involved um, before if it's possible. But I got involved in my junior year. So my first semester at USM, um, I got plugged into research. I started out actually uh, doing some work in a polymer lab. I was helping with with monomer or base unit synthesis. And then uh, we were looking at properties of composites. Well, uh, you know, at that point, uh, I was a new biochem major and decided I wanted to kind of move in the chemistry side of things. And Dr. Wu Jing Miao, which most of you will take as you go through, was a new professor at the time uh, and was looking for research students. So I started out working for Dr. Miao. I helped him get his lab set up and I actually uh, helped him develop some of the experiments that I think are still used for instrumental analysis today. Uh, so, um, you know, coming in as a biochem major, I did some work in polymer science lab uh, and then moved into analytical chemistry. Uh, eventually, after my analytical chemistry time, I, uh, I became a grad student for Dr. Masterson, started organic synthesis. So uh, I had a, a broad variety of interest and I kind of uh, stuck my finger in several different areas. I would suggest that you do get broad exposure to the chemistry subdisciplines because when you get to, to whatever career that you're going into, whether it be academic, uh, industrial, regulatory government work, uh, the, the broader base you have, the more ability you're going to have to uh, to stitch two things together that seem unrelated, which is one of the core strengths of a chemist, the critical thinking component. Um, so I would highly suggest that you look at the different subdisciplines and kind of get a taste of those and make sure that the, you know, that uh, that your interests lie where your undergraduate research is when you take that off. Okay, fantastic, thank you. So how did the undergraduate program as a whole prepare you for your career trajectory? I know that's a broad question, but... but yeah, uh, so I was exposed to a lot of different uh, sub-disciplines just in my professors. That helped seeing different viewpoints uh, on chemistry and trying to trying to wrap all of those together it's all you know it all kind of works the same way you think about you know what an atom is it's made of the same components and it just based on its configuration reacts differently so um, taking that base knowledge into those different sub disciplines and learning how to think critically through problems not just memorizing how a problem should work um, like you know we often uh, do as we go through high school but learning how to critically think through a problem, use deductive reasoning to solve problems. That was the underlying, uh, you know, probably greatest thing that I learned. And, and I had a lot of great professors for that. Uh, so give you some examples of the things that, that I have worked on uh, as I've uh, processed through my career. I have looked at metabolism of explosives by soil microbes. So, you know, that's you've got biochemistry there, you've got analytical chemistry thrown in, you've got organic chemistry thrown into that. So uh, those sub disciplines there, uh, polymer coatings that assisted activated carbon sorption for explosives. Uh, again, you've got polymer chemistry and you've got organic chemistry there and you've got analytical to go along with it. Um, redox behavior of heavy base oils, how an oil changes color as it oxidizes and what's responsible for that. Mostly organic chemistry, but a lot of analytical chemistry going into that. And then toxicology of cooling water additives. That seems kind of silly, but you know, you've got a new additive coming in and all of a sudden uh, you're having the toxicological target organisms are dying. What's responsible there? Well, my, uh, my organic background, some of the bioorganic stuff I did with Dr. Masterson uh, and the, uh, the biochem sides all kind of fed into those projects and helping me to, uh, to solve problems there that, you know, tend to stump somebody who is just focused in a single discipline. So uh, it is great to have that broad background and to really focus on developing your critical thinking and deductive reasoning skills as you move through. Okay, fantastic. Great advice. 
Uh, can you kind of describe, uh, without giving away any, any secrets, of course, can you currently describe, you know, kind of the things you do in your job and, and, and how your education has really played a role in that? Sure. So just to kind of give you a little bit of background, I have, uh, as far as the industrial side, I've worked uh, for the Army Corps of Engineers as a research chemist there. I've worked as a senior analytical chemist for an oil refinery, and I now work for CF Industries that produces uh, uh, ammonia primarily as a product. So we use the Haber, um, Haber-Bosch process to produce ammonia, and then we convert that ammonia to nitric acid, to urea, to ammonium nitrate, and to dinitrogen tetroxide, that's a rocket fuel, ox- uh, um, uh, used to oxidize rocket fuel. And the through each one of those uh, different paths, I've kind of played similar roles. So, um, and for the core, it's very much research project based. Um, but as I moved into the oil refinery, I got a little bit more into problem solving. So, what I do here uh, is I lead R&D projects for CF, and it's not just a single site. I'm actually a corporate technical services project chemist. So we have seven North American sites, two in Canada and five in the US, and we have two in the UK that we also do work for. So each one of those sites come to us when they have a problem that they can't easily solve with their own labs. And we work to solve those problems. And so some of the projects that I've talked about earlier, like toxicology of cooling water, are projects that I've done here. Um, We've looked at that other things like uh, caking issues that we have with our products. Uh, those all sound like they're very simple problems, but they actually end up being very complex because, for example, just caking is dependent on temperature, it's dependent on humidity, um, the temperature cycling, uh, and how the salts can migrate towards each other. So, um, there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of the same tools were applied. The deductive reasoning. Uh, that I talked about earlier in the critical thinking um, really went into that. I I would strongly suggest that as you move towards the courses, realize that these are tools that you're going to use in your career. It's not just a hurdle that you need to get over. Uh, I know when I was younger, that was an easy mindset to have. (laughs) You know, if I can just get to this point, I can graduate and then I'm a chemist. Well, you've actually got to use those tools. So uh, I strongly suggest that you, you put effort into not just going through the motions, but really learning that material and learning how to use it. Um, uh, so all in all, uh, I think I kind of went into this earlier. Um, my broad range of background has allowed me to solve a lot of problems. Um, you know, I work with just about every piece of chemical instrumentation uh, that we use on a regular basis. Nothing, none of the is exotic stuff, but um, you know, uh, HPLCs, mass spectrometers, uh, inductively coupled plasma spectrometers. Uh, we use everything from refractive index and specific gravity measurement, which are really common in industry, uh, to NMR um, when we need NMR, and uh, and we have done a lot of X-ray spectroscopy, things like that. If we don't have it, we contract it out. We've uh, we've even come to Southern Miss with some of our some of the items that we need. So um, all of it, I think, as far as how education has played the role, uh, and I've already said it, goes back to critical thinking, deductive reasoning, and making sure that you master the skill set as you move through. Don't wait until your senior year to think I can remember four years worth of coursework. You master it as you go through and Talk with your professors. Ask the questions that you don't know the answers to. They'll be glad to help you. Fantastic. Well, that's the end of the of the formal questions that I had. I want to just leave you with an opportunity to give any advice that you may want to give to upcoming chemistry majors. All right. So, uh, you know, based on my understanding, I know there's several other people who have interviewed for this. So um, just a few comments um, that I would make going through, if I could do it over again, things that I would do as an undergraduate that would make finding a job easier. So I know 2020 has been a hard year. Um, I I finished my doctorate in 2009 and was looking for postdocs and jobs around that time. So, you know, the the economy had crashed. 
jobs were tough to come by. Uh, I just say that to compare that to 2020 because 2020 is a tough year. Things are a little bit harder than they were before. Don't get discouraged. There are a lot of employers out there looking for good employees. If you're from Mississippi and you want to stay in Mississippi, which is the case with a lot of students, um, start looking around now. Uh, look at LinkedIn and do a search for chemistry jobs. Make an Excel list of those companies so that you can go back to them when there's not a job open. Uh, if you've got a contact there, their HR contact, put that email in your list so you can you can send them an email when the time comes. Um, I would suggest that right now as a freshman or if you're coming in as a transfer student that you go ahead and make contact with people who have the careers that you want to pursue. Uh, right now you actually have the greatest advantage in making that contact and networking because as a student you have the power of the school behind you. You have the reputation of the school behind you. When you go to these people and say, hey, I'm, you know, my name is Del Rosado. I'm looking for, you know, future opportunities in chemistry. I'm really interested in your career. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Um, you've made a contact that could turn into a summer opportunity because you were a student who was motivated enough to make that initial contact. You weren't afraid of making the contact, so you've got some social skills, <laughs> right? And, you know, you're uh, you're putting yourself out there, but it's also in a non-threatening way to them. They know that you're not going to email them every week looking for a job, that you're not that senior, that it's just graduated without having a job lined up and realize, oh no, I've got to do something and I've got to do it fast. So it gives you the opportunity to have a real conversation with them, to build a reputation and rapport with those people um, and to get an idea of what's available out there. So I would really suggest that you start now why are you a student? You know, it's not uh, uh, it's not unheard of for students to reach out and set up tours for groups of students, or to uh, to start a conversation that leads for uh, to a better collaboration with the university and a path forward for other students. Uh, so when you do this, you're not only helping yourself, you're also helping other students to come. I can guarantee you uh, that your professors will thank you for this because I'll tell you what. These guys work really, really hard to create good course material, good learning opportunities to keep research going and to keep the department well outfitted with instruments. They have many hats that they wear and uh, in these areas, especially with reaching out to industry, you can really help there yourself and for people who follow after you by helping them make contacts as well as helping yourself make the contact. So, um, you know, again, when you're contacting these people, you've got the power of the school behind you and you've got Dr. Masters in here as an advocate for you. Um, so that's my, my, my soapbox for <laughs> contacting industry, but I would suggest uh, decide what path you're interested in. If you're interested in running your own research group, you've got a department full of great people that can give you advice and that can help you down that path. Um, get into those labs as early as you can, even if at first it's washing glassware. Um, I did a lot of those jobs myself when I first started out. Um, get into a lab, see how the labs run, see how they work, uh, just to give you a good idea, you know, of whether or not that path is really the one that you want to choose, and to get you into the mindset of working in a research lab, because that's different than your classwork. Um, and in addition, I, I'd throw in what, you know, think about what you want from your life. You know, you've got your career and that's why you're in school right now. You also have other components of your life that you're going to work towards and all of that wraps together as a whole package. You want to make sure that you've got a whole package uh, that is a good fit for you. So I'll, those are my suggestions for you know, uh, your time going forward from this point whether you're a freshman or whether you're transferred, you've got plenty of time to make connections, verify that the path that you've chosen is the path that you want to take in chemistry, um, and to reach out to the different people in the subdisciplines and get broader experience there is going to help you uh, later on. I'll tell you again, reiterate this, that uh, in industry, it's good to have a broad range of experience uh, instead of going down just a single line. Pat. Okay, well, thank you very much. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time today to uh, talk with our Chemistry 108 students, and I'm, I'm sure the advice you give them is going to give them something to think about and uh, 
you giving them the opportunity to see uh, how you started and transitioned to Southern Miss and, and ultimately ended up in industry. So, so I want to, I want to thank you again for, for your time today. You're, you're welcome. Let me uh, help the students out a little bit. I'm going to give them my work email address. Please feel free to email me if you have questions. I'll be glad to answer questions. It's D R O S A D O at cfindustries.com. Uh, my direct line uh, office number here is 662-751-2918. Um, write that number down, put it in your spreadsheet. You've got a new bullet point there. Uh, shoot me an email every now and then if you're interested in working in industry. If you want to know something else about CF, uh, you know, this is the Corporate Technical Services Lab, but we have labs on every one of our sites. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're interested in Mississippi, that's great. If you're interested in other areas, be glad to help you out there too. Just give me a ring. All right, well, thank you for that offer.